books have a tale to tell You can't always hear them But they wag their tails Happy when they're feeling well Dogs can't say I love you But they wag their tails All dogs have a tale to tell All dogs have a tale to tell All dogs have a tale to tell Funding for Canine Tales is provided by Premier Realty. Hi, welcome to Canine Tales. In this episode, we'll bring you tales of loyalty, an adoption tale from the beaches of Puerto Rico, tales that go back to the early days of our country, and a wonderful shelter that keeps many tales wagon. First, We'll meet Leah. Leah is a beautiful collie that is always looking to learn something new. An award-winning dog that has also taught others that sometimes in life you must think on your paws. Next, I'll introduce you to Calvin and Nutley. These are two best friends that just happen to be dogs. They do everything together. They were both rescued with one coming all the way from the beaches of Puerto Rico. You will then meet Katori, Kai, and Wadaka. These are Native American Indian dogs. They draw a crowd wherever they go and can be traced back to many of the Native American Indian tribes. These dogs are spectacular in size and history. And finally, we'll meet the great folks of the Northeast Animal Shelter located in Salem, Mass. It was established in 1976 as one of New England's largest non-profit, no-kill animal shelters. Sometime in the next few months, they expect to see their 120,000th pet find love. They have a rivalry happening at the shelter. Will that pet be a dog or a cat? We think it's a canine for sure. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode of Canine Tales. Hi, my name is Kathy, and this is my dog, Leah. Leah is a rough collie. So I wanted a collie my whole life because of Lassie. And I got her in 2007 when she was a puppy. I found a, couldn't find a breeder with puppies, and I finally called one, and she had just let go her pick of her litter. And to come to find out, Leah was born the day that my mom had been buried. So I felt that it was fate. And um, I bought her, I brought her home. I wanted to do agility, freestyle, and um, tricks and things with her because my daughter had gotten into agility and it looked like fun. So I wanted to try it. A year later, I had back pain. So I was laying in bed and she kept nosing my back and growling and wouldn't stop. So I said to my husband, you know, sometimes dogs smell cancer. I think we should go to the hospital and find out what's going on. And I went to the hospital and I told him, you know, I had back pain. Woke up paralyzed from the chest down a few hours later and they rushed me into Boston and removed five vertebrae and sent me to the, ho uh, the rehab for a couple months saying, you'll never walk again. So I asked them, when am I going to run my dog? And the, the doctor looked like I had slapped her and she said, run, you'll be lucky if you're walking with braces on your hands and feet. You're never going to run your dog. And I came home in this living room. Leah was by my side or on the bed the whole time with my other dog, Allie. And she was my little lassie. I fell out of the chair once and Leah I dragged myself over to the desk in the corner and I pulled the phone off the desk and it fell under so and I said Leah go get the phone and she just got it I never taught her how to do that she just got it and then from then on everything I dropped she just picked up so I wanted to do agility because my daughter was having so much fun and we were at the trials 
every weekend with her and I, so I started training Leah. Leah barks at me when I make a mistake, but in the beginning, she had to learn with me in the chair, which went excruciatingly slow, so she just spent the whole time barking. It was fun, I was just happy to be out there. I have no delusions of grandeur, but she was really good at it. She, so my husband Dave started running her in a couple of events so that it was positive for her and she would enjoy it. And they became the number two collie in the country in tunnels that year. My daughter wanted me to start a 4-H agility club and we do canine, uh, canine freestyle, which is dancing with your dog, and agility, and we use it for community service. Kids will sometimes use Leah as their dog if they don't have a dog, or their dog is sick, or their dog is old, and she trains them to do agility. So if they turn the wrong way, or they give their commands too late, she'll back at them. One of the little boy in the club didn't have a dog, so he borrowed her for the year, and I told him the dog is already trained, so you have to teach her something. Well, he taught her this trick called payday. Basically, she picks pockets. So he taught her to go up, if there's a dollar hanging out of your pocket, he says payday, and Leah steals it and brings it over to him. Well, it, she got really good at it, and at one particular event, we were doing bucket tricks, so the kids did so many tricks, and they wanted to all do payday, because it's a flashy trick. Leah stole $40 worth of money and this poor gentleman walked over and had a 20 hanging out of his coat and she just ran up, stole it, and gave it to me and, get, and looked for her cookie. And I said it was for the war dogs and the soldiers and he gave us the 20. I wrote a letter to the Collie Club of America and told about that. She did pet therapy work for a while and then she teaches the kids in 4-H and she does all this community service. So um, they gave her the award last year. So Leah's a bit of a diva. She really thinks that you're there for her pleasure, which is fine because she's so pretty that we like it. And um, if you're sitting, she's going to come over and she's going to step on your foot and want you to rub her back because that's what you're there for is to rub Leah's back. And if you're in the couch and she wants to sit it, she'll just sit right next to you and pretty much on you. <laughs> she loves to cuddle. She loves to snuggle. And you cannot have a cup of water anywhere on the floor because no matter where you put it, somehow she's going to knock it over. Well, you never know where life is going to take you and how things are going to affect you. And I never realized when I loved Lassie that when I get a collie, how life-changing it would be for me. Hi, my name's Alice, and I'd like to introduce you to my dogs, Calvin and Nutley. So this is Calvin, and he we adopted him from Save a Dog in 2007. We moved in together, and we got a dog right away. Um, and Calvin was our lucky, our lucky pick. Save a Dog had just gotten this litter of about seven. I think there were seven of them. And the funny thing is, they are all all their names started with C's. So there was Calvin, Carlos, Candy. Um, I don't just I don't remember the other ones, but there was a bunch of them, and um, we you know we went to a meet and greet, and um, and he was the one we picked. With Calvin, he is how do I describe him? He's our dog that has given us the most trouble <laughs> and the most headaches. Um, he's not that smart, is how we like to describe him, unfortunately, right? But you're so cute. He's very a skittish kind of dog. He's not very street smart. His other unique trait is he likes to eat rocks. Um, so Calvin uh, has cost us quite a bit of money. My husband does want to make me a really nice necklace with the nice rock that he ate um, last year. Uh, around this time again, he likes to give us scares in the winter. Um, he ate a rock and um, ended up at the emergency hospital. The rock had was removed. He's got a huge scar um, from the incision. You would have expected a huge rock to come out of his stomach. The rock was perfectly square like a die and like a dice and um, it just got lodged. And, um, and so he's, yeah, he's thrown up probably about 12 rocks, that, 15 rocks that I can remember, but that one in particular he didn't.
Our wedding was February of 2010, and we had been ready to get a second dog probably for about six months or so, and we decided to hold off. We knew that there were a lot of rest, you know, um, abandoned dogs in Puerto Rico, so we said, let's just wait till we go for our wedding and we'll find a dog there. Our first day there, the two, there were two things on the agenda for my husband primarily was to rent a surfboard, and to start looking for dogs. Um, so forget the wedding planning. That was, that was our plan. So we went down to Rincon, which is like a big surfer um, area. And we go to a little beach shop, Mango Beach Shop, and they do surfboard rentals. And there were dogs all, all over the property. And the woman's like, yeah, well, I rescue dogs and I try and get, you know, the tourists and, and people to, to take them back to the state. Well, I guess it's our lucky day because we came to rent a surfboard and, a, and adopt a dog and you're, we're getting both done at the same place. She's like, you know, I have a dog at home. I don't bring her to the shop every day because she's really high energy, takes up a lot of time and energy and um but she might be a better mix for you better fit for you guys she said can you come back tomorrow we came back the following day we saw nutley we saw her playing with the other dogs and she played exactly the same way as calvin played and that was what we were we as soon as we saw that we're like they're gonna get along great and that was it she's a handful uh her name is nutley for a reason she's got i believe she got called a nut so many times that um, that's where the name came from. She's about 22, 23 pounds. Uh, she can scale a six foot fence. Uh, she gets out of the yard all the time. She loves to cuddle and if she's not touching on some part of your body, then she's really not um, her, then she's not herself. You wouldn't think that she was this lovable when you first meet her. She, um, she comes across as really um, uh, aggressive and she barks a lot. It's probably the chihuahua in her and she scares, she's very protective. So when dogs meet her or even strangers come into the house, she just barks and barks and barks. And what takes us, we figured out it takes her about a minute to calm down. And within a minute or a minute and a half, she is your best friend on your lap and wanting to lick your face. Notly, you can see the chihuahua in her. So in Puerto Rico, there's a lot of chihuahuas and there's a lot of shepherd mixes, which they call satos. So when I tell people that she's a sh Chihuahua Shepherd mix, they're like, ah, that's not possible. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you know, the Shepherd mixes in Puerto Rico are more like Calvin size. They're 25 pound dogs, they're much smaller. So a Chihuahua mix with, with one of those is actually realistic. Um, yeah, so that's how she, she's got a Chihuahua face, the big ears, which is a Sato trait. Um, really, really big ears, they say over time. The dogs, because they're street dogs and they're so street smart, their ears, I don't know if this is true or not, but they say their ears have just gotten bigger and they stick straight up so that they're like antennas for them. And they got along like they'd known each other forever. They get, they sleep together, they take naps on each other, um, they play together, they're just, they're great. So Calvin and Nutley have been um, awesome additions to our family. Um, I was never a dog person until I got these two dogs. They're my first. Um, I had two cats before them. None of my friends can believe that I wasn't a dog person before 2007. What I always tell my friends is a rescue is the way to go. They're awesome. Hi, my name is Carolyn. I would like you to meet my three Native American Indian dogs, Katori, Wadeka, and Kai. How you doing? My name's Jim. Um, these are also my Indian dogs, me and my wife. They're very, very special to me, have been since I got them. The Native American Indian dog, they were bred for hunting, fishing, each uh, family in a tribe had like 30 and when that person in that family passed away their favorite dog was also buried with them. Back in the day um, people were a lot smaller so when the tribes moved from place to place the women, the children actually rode these dogs. The role in the tribe was hunting, fishing, they were very uh, protective. We were looking for a dog and we came across the Native American Indian dog and then we researched them. There were several breeders and we looked into all of them 
And the breeder that we chose from Lowell, Michigan, she is fantastic. Katori was my first. Uh, the second I got him, he changed my life. He's just an unbelievable dog. He's, from the second I got him, I can't believe the attention from day one was a showstopper from everybody more curious as to what he was, size, never mattered to anybody who was, anybody who had a fear of dogs came right up to him like he was a natural. He's, he's naturally playful, he's easy going. You have to watch him, he's big. I mean, he can knock you over, give you a bloody lip, whatever, but he's my boy. The second one we got was Wadeka. Uh, we got him at three months. The breeder thought that he was not adoptable or sellable. So we went out and, and we met him. And as soon as we took him, he just turned into a totally different dog. Oh my God, he talks constantly. I mean, if you want to start a conversation with him, he will actually talk back to you. When we got with Deka, he didn't want to, when we met him at the kennel, he didn't want to associate with people, didn't want to associate with dogs. Nobody knew what he'd be like. Breeder asked me if I could pick any dog in the whole place. I looked at my wife, I said, we came here for that dog, he's us. We took him, we took him a mile away from the breeder, and he changed. Then we got Kai. He was very shy. I drove out to Michigan, and I spent a couple of days out there. She was so impressed that he came to me right away. He bonded with me right away. So she said, do you want him? And I said, I love him, and I'm taking him home. And then we decided to get our littlest one. Kai. He's the only one who he gets along with our dogs and loves people. He's kind of dog aggressive. He doesn't really like other dogs. The other two are fine with with a sparrow up to a horse. Uh, it doesn't matter, but Kai, I keep, try to keep him away from other dogs. They don't uh, bark. They have a very low muffle. Um, they poke um, to alert you of a stranger or, you know, things like that. We walk them daily. They always draw a crowd. Um, everybody wants to know, you know, what kind of dog they are. These dogs have real hair. It's not for, they're hypoallergenic. Um, they blow their coat for about six weeks out of the year. After that, there's nothing. Like a lot of dogs shed year round, it's terrible, but these no, not, don't have that problem. They're very comforting and soothing to people who are sick. My husband's brother just recently passed away and uh, Leahy allowed Katori to be there with him until he passed. I can honestly say that out of all the dogs that I've had throughout my life, that these dogs are the most loving and loyal and they're so attentive it's like they're almost human and they're just unbelievable dogs to me the northeast animal shelter was established in 1976 as one of new england's largest non-profit no-kill animal shelters they are located just a half hour north of Boston and easily accessible to all of New England. Being open seven days a week makes the adoption of a pet convenient. We spoke to many of the wonderful volunteers and attended their 2014 year-end fundraiser. Take a look.
Hi, my name is Jen Adams, and I'm the volunteer coordinator here at Northeast Animal Shelter. I um, help coordinate the volunteers. We have over 300 of them doing all kinds of jobs. We have volunteers that come as early as 6 in the morning to walk the dogs. We have volunteers that help with the cats. But then I also have kind of experts in their field, like graphic artists and groomers, who will uh, volunteer their time to help us out, either in emergency situations or just in general when we need um, um, need some work done for us. So it's a wonderful place for people to come to help us out, especially if they want to have some time with some cats or dogs. Northeast Animal Shelter was established about 38 years ago. We were um, partnering with a no-kill shelter down in New York, and that's kind of how we got established. There were no no-kill sh shelters in Massachusetts at the time, and the founder of the shelter really wanted to make that the most important thing to have a no-kill shelter so that any animal that came in here they would be here until they found their forever home. Uh, it's a big uh, building we can have over 150 animals in here at a time and the turnaround is amazing. This shelter is like a four-star hotel. We have over 300 volunteers here from about 6.30 in the morning till about 9 o'clock at night, readying these rooms for the animals, putting all clean bedding and toys in. It really is like turnout service. And these dogs are walked every two hours. Uh, you know, you couldn't want for any more for these animals right off the bat once they arrive from various shelters from out of state to see how they're going to be treated here. Uh, when they are going through an adoption process, it's same-day adoption as long as the people who are interested in that animal have all the information they need, um, which is basically proof of ownership of a home or a letter or something that we can get hold of a landlord that says they are able to bring a cat or a dog home. We want the whole family here. We don't want any surprises. Um, you know, sometimes we'll hear someone say, oh, it's my son's birthday and we want to give him a puppy. But you know what? That can be a real challenge. Maybe that's not the puppy that this boy wanted, or maybe this boy actually wanted a cat. So we say, come on down with the whole family and have him pick the animal out, you know, of, of his dreams and have them talk to an adoption counselor and make sure that that's actually going to be a really good fit. We are one of the largest no-kill shelters in New England. We have rescued so far over 120,000 pets. Um, this year, and we are finishing up uh, our 2014 year, we have already saved over 4,000 pets that have been adopted out. Many people ask us when we walk around the shelter, why are so many of these dogs from other states? Why don't we rescue local dogs? And in fact, we do rescue a lot of local dogs. But in Massachusetts, we have a lot of awesome laws and rules in place to take care of our dogs, and other states don't do that. Hi, my name is Holly. I'm a Red Dot volunteer at the Northeast Animal Shelter. I come in a half hour before I'm even scheduled, just to, because I love getting like my puppy kisses in the morning and stuff. It's hard not to love that. Um, and it kind of, that feeling kind of carries you through the week, because it just, it's, it's a good feeling. And then, especially now that us volunteers are more, um, we interact more, because we have a Facebook page now that, um, my coordinator let me put up. So we're able to interact and we're able to tell each other who got adopted that day. And it's just, it's really, it's, it's nice to be able to interact with everyone and, and I really like it. I have trainers, we have tra professional trainers and behaviors that come in that work with these dogs. So if an animal has an issue, we figure it out and we get them help immediately. Um, we get them out of the situation of a shelter where some animals don't thrive and we get them into foster homes. And it is amazing how an animal, it's like sending a kid off to camp for a day to a couple weeks. You know, they just thrive in that home situation, they relax so that when they come back into the shelter, they're adopted almost immediately. Hi, my name is Nicole and I'm a volunteer here at the Northeast Animal Shelter. So I've been currently doing the 7 a.m. shift on Saturday morning. So we do all the kennel cleaning and we take the dogs for their first walks. Um, I started at the animal shelter first as a community service project for my school. And I um, you know, quickly ran out of hours there and I wanted to stay. So I asked our volunteer coordinator if I could stay and she was more than happy to accept volunteers and she let me stay and I've actually just recently picked up the Monday morning receptionist shift and I thoroughly enjoy learning everything from all the staff members and all the other volunteers and everyone is a great help in walking the dogs and working with the cats are 
just a, it's just a wonderful experience and I really enjoy what I do here. Hi, my name is Leslie Cefalo and I'm the kennel manager here at the Northeast Animal Shelter. I've been here now for about five and a half years and I couldn't think of anywhere better to be. It's really a good feeling when you know that you're helping to save animals from shelters that are down south that may not otherwise have a chance. And we are bringing them here and getting them their forever homes. So it's nice to feel that I'm part of something where it's like a giving back and it's extremely rewarding. We do all kinds of events here at the shelter to advertise the shelter but also to get, get people in. Uh, people love to come back and visit us with their animals that they've adopted over the years. Our biggest event I think is our Santa Claus we call Paws with Claws and that's where people bring their pets in to meet with Santa and that is an event we've been doing for five years here at the shelter and it gets bigger every year. I think we had over 250 families join us this year for what was supposed to be I think just a three hour event and it really went on for, for almost four hours. We have a wonderful Santa who meets and greets all these dogs and cats whether they're used to Santa or not some of them you can tell are a little bit afraid of Santa but he holds them lovingly and takes their picture and while the adopt the um, donation fee is supposed to be I think five dollars many people will give us ten to twenty dollars just because they're so thrilled with the outcome of this picture with their animals so yeah it really is a nice kind of culmination of the year rounding out the year by finishing up and seeing a lot of our past what we call kind of alumni visiting us and we all you know the ones we especially that that were near and dear to our hearts over the years when they come back it's just such a special time hi my name is Chris um, and this is my dog Connor um, we adopted Connor from the Northeast Animal Shelter roughly about five years ago we come back here every year to get his picture taken with Santa hi, my name is Martha I have two dogs adopted from the Northeast Animal Shelter um, that's Ollie that you see right there his name was Shorty when I adopted him and this is Sarah, and her name was Scout when I adopted her. Hi, my name's Kelly, and this is Molly. Hi, Molly. And Molly's a Labradoodle, and we have come to the shelter since my little kids were babies. We always would come and see the, the cats and the dogs, and it's their favorite little trip. And uh, we're hoping Molly does well with Santa today. We're hoping my name is Leanne, and this is Rouge. I adopted her at the Northeast Shelter in May. Um, we've had her for about six months, and she's doing great. It's one of the best things that we ever did. My kids love her. My husband loves her. And we're just really glad that we were, had the opportunity to get her. I'm Carrie. I'm Viviana. And this is our dog, Barley and we have had him for about six years and we rescued him and we're probably going to look for another dog today. My name is Sarah and this is my dog Tiki. Tiki is actually the third dog that we have rescued from the Northeast Animal Shelter. She is a loving, wonderful pup and we are just so happy to have her in our lives. This year alone, uh, for the year 2014, we have saved over 4,000 pets uh, from, in some cases, I'm sure, a horrible, a horrible ending. Some of the animals come in clearly abused physically and sometimes mentally abused. Some of them really it's a challenge to get them to start trusting humans again. Some animals do come in with, with um, medical challenges that we feel the need to have to go out and um, ask for extra money for particular operations. We have aquatic centers that will rehabilitate animals. Uh, we put them into foster homes where they will work with these animals one-on-one -on -one for weeks to sometimes months, making sure that these animals are rehabilitated and ready to then come back and find a forever family. Although sometimes the foster families fall in love with these dogs and cats and end up keeping them. We call them foster failures, but it's not a bad thing. You know, at least these animals are still finding a loving home. All dogs have a tail to tell. You can't always hear them, but they wag their tails, happy when they're feeling well. Dogs can't say I love you, but they wag the tails. All dogs have a tail to tell. All dogs have a tail to tell. All dogs have a tail to tell. You, they